What is going on with regional sports networks right now? From Bally sports owner Diamond Sports Group missing a $140 million payment and all but making bankruptcy imminent to Warner Brothers Discovery deciding it wants out of the RSN business, there's a lot going on right now. While we aren't going to dive into the details of all of it, in this video we offer a high level look at what happened, why it happened, and what it could mean going forward with watching your team's games on an RSN. Now let's start with what happened. The current firestorm kicked off when Sinclair Broadcasting's Diamond Sports Group, which owns Bally Sports, including Bally Sports Plus and the Bally Sports Plus app, announced it would miss a $140 million payment to its bondholders. All signs are pointing to Diamond Sports filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy very soon, which would force the 42 MLB, NBA, and NHL teams whose games air on Bally's 19 RSNs to find a new home for their broadcasts. The next news to break was Warner Brothers Discovery saying it no longer wants to operate its AT&T sports networks, and that by the end of March 2023, it plans to shut down those networks. That decision will affect 10 MLB, NBA, and NHL teams in Denver, Houston, Pittsburgh, and in part Seattle through WBD's stake in Root Sports there. The Astros, Mariners, Pirates, and Rockies have until March 31st to buy back their broadcast rights. After that, WBD will liquidate those assets and the situation for fans who want to watch Major League Baseball games without cable will get murkier. Then Comcast, which operates in some of those markets, said it was not interested in buying them from WBD. This has all left Major League Baseball, at least, looking internally for a way to let its fans stream MLB games without cable. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver seems unconcerned about losing Bally as a distributor for its broadcasts. In a Sports Business Journal article, Silver said he believes local TV stations and streaming services could fill the gap. Orlando Magic CEO Alex Martin said in the same article, quote, even in a worst case scenario, our games will still be on the air, end quote. So for fans who want to stream NBA games without cable, at least the owners do not believe that there is any cause for concern. And for fans who want to watch NHL games without cable, it's likely that should Diamond Group freefall, games would likely end up on ESPN+. So why is this all happening? The current RSN drama is a reflection of the way the media industry is changing. It's no secret that Americans are cutting the cord and looking for ways to watch live sports without cable in record numbers. As more people switch to streaming, there are fewer people paying for RSNs through cable providers. That shift has led to a decrease in revenue for RSNs. Also, RSNs have lost broadcasting rights to broadcast NHL and NBA games to national networks like ESPN. That has resulted in fewer games being aired on RSNs, which leads to a disappointing experience for fans and advertisers. Add to that ongoing disputes between RSNs and cable providers over distribution fees and carriage agreements that result in blackouts in local markets for certain games, and the situation is clearly pointing to the need for a new broadcasting model for RSNs. Professional sports leagues have been seeking a way to take their games direct to consumers. RSN stood in the way, but with that model crumbling, other options are cropping up. MSG Plus is a DTC streaming service that will cost $30 a month, or $310 a year to people who live in the New York area and want to watch the MSG RSN. Knicks fans will be able to watch NBA games without cable, and Rangers, Islanders, and Devils fans will be able to stream NHL games without cable through the service, which it said will also offer the ability to watch a single game for just $10. It will be interesting to see if MSG Plus fares better than Bally Sports Plus. We had high hopes for that app, but as we shared in our review of the service, it did not provide a good experience. It was riddled with ads, and other than being the only way to watch all of a particular team's games, it didn't offer much compelling content for the price tag. And there's word that the Yes Network and Cubs are both planning to offer a DTC streaming service in time for the 2023 MLB season. Scripps could also get into the mix. It could, could provide a soft landing for struggling RSNs because it can reach viewers over the air through pay TV or through connected TV on a local and nationwide basis through ION and the Scripps networks. 
Scripps has an interesting play because sports leagues know they make far less money with direct-to-consumer options. Sports Business Journal reported that RSN fees make up anywhere from 10 to 70 percent of many MLB, NBA, and NHL teams' total revenue, and quoted one NBA team president as saying that its revenue could drop from $30 million down to $8 million if it switched to a DTC model. A mitigating factor, at least for the NBA, is that its national media rights deals with ESPN and Turner end after the 2024-25 season. Multiple mega companies, including ESPN, WBD, Google, Amazon, and Apple, are all interested. That could create a bidding war that benefits the NBA regardless of what happens with RSNs. National partners are appealing to fans, advertisers, and leagues because it would eliminate blackouts. So, the short answer to why this is happening is money. But the longer answer involves understanding that RSNs have been intertwined with cable. As that model declines, so does the role and power of RSNs. Simply tacking their fees, which have always been some of the highest for cable and TV operators to carry, on to streaming subscribers' price tag has not sat well. Fubo, for example, forcing people to pay between $11 and $14 more per month for RSNs, whether or not they want them or not, comes to mind. That reality has caused us to recommend Hulu Live and YouTube TV over the sports-centric streaming service, especially as it continues to lack the Turner networks. Many people who are cutting cable in favor of a more tailored and cost-effective TV experience aren't going to want to pay that much more per month for an RSN they don't care about. So what could happen in the coming months in light of all this movement in the live sports streaming space? Well, we could see the major professional sports leagues offer their own online streaming options where fans pay for access to every team or just their team's games. As Forbes and other media outlets have reported, Major League Baseball's Rob Manfred has already said that teams who have their rights reclaimed from the defunct RSNs will have the option to air their games on MLB Network. He also said that in-market games could be streamed on MLB.tv. Currently, only out-of-market games are aired there. We could also see someone like Scripps step in and fill the gap. It's reasonable to think that some of the larger teams like the Yankees and Cubs will satisfy fans with their own streaming services. And it's also entirely plausible to expect RSNs to stick around in one form or fashion for a few years longer, either through cable or through their own DTC offerings. Or until all major leagues negotiate agreements with national networks or media companies like ESPN and WBD or tech companies like Apple and Amazon. With Apple TV Plus getting a big deal for major league soccer and YouTube TV landing NFL Sunday ticket, it's clear that live sports are moving towards streaming services. But let's not forget that leagues still make big money from RSNs. Until that's no longer true, they will keep them around until it no longer makes financial sense to do so. Yeah, live sports are still the money driver hands down for live TV. There's huge money in it, and even as RSNs morph into whatever they will become, there's still going to be multiple ways for fans to watch their favorite teams. While the streaming space is maturing, consumers still have choices. If RSNs do go away, it's a good thing for streamers who don't want to pay for them. This may cause problems for fans who are only currently able to watch their team's games through an RSN, Hopefully, teams will provide a way for fans to watch their games. We'll just have to watch and see what happens. Now let us know what you think. Are RSNs important to you? What do you think the future holds for them? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can receive all our latest news and reviews when they drop. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.